Yo, everybody. Do you have any favorites in your life? A go-to, a first pick. Like, you'll settle for Coke, but your first pick will always be Pepsi. Now, you might be disagreeing with me, and that's okay, but I'm gonna keep going. You will take Bowser, but your favorite Mario Kart driver will always be Princess Peach. Or you love a good Instagram reel, but TikTok will always be your favorite social media platform. My name is Jamel, and for me, what will always come in first place will be ice cream. Any day, any meal, first place, always and forever. <laughs> but hey, seriously, no matter what category we're talking about, we all have a favorite. We all have something that's in first place. To prove it, I asked a few homies of mine to quiz me on more of my first place choices. And just so you know, I haven't seen these questions before. Nobody warned me. Here we go. All right, Jamel, would you rather win the championship or be called the best player of the game? Oh, championship. Always give me the trophies. Hey, Jamel, would you rather win a gold medal as a team or a silver medal as an individual? I'm still gonna go Olympic gold medal as a team player. Give me the accolades. No one remembers who's in second place. Jamel, would you rather start in a game but lose or be benched in the game but win? Ooh, now this is where I get individualistic. I'm gonna start the game on the bench. I mean, I'm over here feeling crushed by this uh, player of the year for the whole division. You wanna know how many uh, games of soccer I played on teams? Probably like, I don't know, 80 something. Wanna know how many I won? Three. And two of them, I was not on the field for. I was injured. <laughs> Am I the reason? <laughs> that we don't come in first place. Okay, Jamel, would you rather be the best player on a losing team or the backup player on the best team? Yo, I ask my homies this question every couple of months. I would rather be the best player on a losing team, faux show, hands down. I bet you had your own answers to all of those questions too. Have you ever noticed that when you're for something being in first place, it usually means you are not a fan of something else? You might be for a certain sports team winning the Super Bowl or the World Cup, which means you're also completely against the other team. Or you love yourself some Taylor Swift which means you definitely are against Jake Gyllenhaal. You might be all for your favorite music streaming service, but not for that other one. Maybe you're on team Spotify or team Apple Music, or you're either for PS5 or for Xbox. Now the one that's the most important, at least to me, what about team Kidoba or team Chipotle? I'm, I'm just gonna let you debate it to yourself or whoever's nearby you. Do you see my point? When you are for something, it's really easy to not be a fan of something else. All of us are for or against all sorts of different things. And honestly, that could be confusing as followers of Jesus because sometimes it seems like being a Christian means getting a long list of things we're supposed to be for or against. Maybe you'd say Christians are for going to church every Sunday or celebrating Christmas and Easter or helping people who are starving or suffering. But on the other side of things, maybe you'd also say Christians are supposedly against things like people who don't believe what they believe or certain ways people choose to live their lives or specific types of movies or music with so many ideas about what Christians are supposed to be for or against, how do you know if you're getting this whole faith thing right? How do you know what's really in first place when it comes to our faith? Well, think about one of your closest friends right now. You got me in your mind? If I asked you what was in first place or what their absolute favorite thing was, you probably know the answer, right? Because you know your friends really well. You know their teams, you know the influencers they love, you see the way they live their lives, you hear the things they talk about, you know what matters most to them. What if I told you that we could discover what's first place in our faith in the same way. What if I told you that the more we get to know Jesus, the more we'd know what he says is the greatest thing in our faith. Whether you're brand new to church or have been following Jesus for a long time, you probably experienced some of the struggle to know what we're supposed to be for as Christians. And that's why getting to know Jesus 
will help all of us. Because the easiest way to discover what Jesus' followers are supposed to be about is to look at what Jesus said and did while he was alive on earth. There, we'll find what's in first place when it comes to our faith. About 2,000 years ago, one of Jesus' closest friends, Matthew, wrote down some things he saw Jesus do and things he heard Jesus say while he was here on earth. A lot of those stories are now found in the Bible, in the book of Matthew. One of those stories Matthew wrote down from Jesus' life tells us about a conversation that Jesus had with a group of some of the most important people of his day. These people were the religious leaders in Jesus' home country of Israel. They were experts in God's law, which basically meant they knew everything on the list of what God was for and against. In fact, these guys had actually become known for being against a lot of things. One day, one of those religious leaders asked Jesus an important question. He asked Jesus this, teacher, which is the greatest commandment in the law? So basically this guy asked, yo Jesus, what's most important to God? What do you think God would say about what should be first place? Jesus replied, love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. All the law and the prophets hang on these two commandments. You see here, the focus of the religious leader who asked Jesus that question was a little off. The religious leader was part of a group of leaders who made sure, 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 I was trying to say show. The religious leader was part of a group of leaders who made sure that everyone was focused on following a list of rules and commandments. People were supposed to obey these rules and laws in order to live a good, honorable, holy life. But Jesus shifted that focus. See, Jesus came to set us free from a life defined by a bunch of do's and don'ts. Jesus came to free us from concentrating so hard on following the law. And that changed the game, not just for our lives, but for our faith as well. Now, instead of being all about rules and regulations and being worried about for and against, we know exactly what we're supposed to put in first place when it comes to our faith. And it's exactly what Jesus said here, to love God, to love people, and to love you. Instead of life being all about rules and regulations, Jesus said that life was about loving God, loving others, and loving ourselves. When it comes to our faith, this is where we can focus our attention. This is where we can put our energy. This is what's in first place. What I really love about this passage is that Jesus didn't even mention anything God wants us to be against. Did you catch that? When asked what matters most to God, Jesus responded instead with the things that God wants us to be for. And I think that gives us a really important standard for our faith. What we're for is so much more important than what we're against. And even better, we don't have to wonder what we're supposed to be for. When we believe in and follow Jesus, we know what we're for because we know what he said. Love God, love people, love you. That's it. Whether you consider yourself to be a follower of Jesus or not, here's what I want you to know, that God loves you. And it's that incredible love that we get to share with the world. When we know how much God loves us, we can't help but love God in return. And of course, we want to tell the people about it too. Why? Because that love has changed us. It's that one thing that changes everything. And it's what we can put in first place as we follow Jesus. Love God, love people, Love you. I think there are three things that we can all do this week to help us focus on what's in first place. First, love God. Start with spending time with God. Tell God what's really going on in your life and what you need. Read about God in scripture, listen to worship music, go for a walk in nature that God created. Whatever you do, choose to spend time with God when you do it. When you spend time with God, you'll learn something about God, experience God in a new way, and love God even more than you did before. Then. Love others. One way to do that, by serving someone else. So this week, choose to love others by doing something kind of unexpected for somebody else. Finally, love you. And what do I mean by that? Choose to love yourself this week by speaking kind words to yourself and about yourself. Recognize your value and notice things that are great about you.
Jesus had so many opportunities to share what God might have been against, but instead, he chose to live his life in a way that showed who and what God was for. And we can do the same. We can love God, love people, and love you. And that, my friends, is what's in first place.